Hello. I am mostly done consuming the foods. Mostly. Not quite, but getting there. Sorry about the testing in the chat. I'm like having VOT issues, so. Everyone hydrate. Thank you for being here, folks, or watching the VOD later and um, lurking for the lurkers. Yay. Um, let me just get my stream manager here up so that I can monitor things. And um, then we're going to try to figure out what the ever loving heck we are doing in this game. Okay. Are we back in the Forgotten Library? Looks like we are. Okay. Well. Let's load. And see what's happening. Because I have zero memory of what is even going on anymore. All right. You all meet up in the library the next morning, vested and happy about your victory. All right, we defeated, um, oh goodness gracious, what was his name? Drat. Kim's older brother. And also, Kim is clearly a plant mage. We learned that. Okay. That's my memory. <laughs> Mine. We did it, folks! We saved Quinn and Kim and sealed away another demon! So... Man. With these demon souls gathered, we should have enough power to fix the tear in the seal. That is, once I'm done making adjustments to the locket. Mm -hmm. Like, what's this, Anne? You're not done yet? Didn't think you'd be the bottleneck here. <sighs> Man. It's because your people keep dragging me off on all these dangerous missions. That's it. I'm going into research mode. You won't see me until I am done. You know... Caden, you should take care of yourself as well. Pulling all-nighters can't be healthy. And I'll sleep for a month when I get back to the academy. <sighs> Victoria. I applaud your ambition, Anne, but you're no use to us if you keel over from overwork. After Ronan's, oh, that was his name. After Ronan's defeat yesterday, I believe we have a chance to work in peace, at least for a while. Hmm. Cheerful, amused, or concerned? Let's be concerned. Um, please remember to pace yourself, Anne. <sighs> Fine, if you say so. Hear me out. Fine. If we're gonna wait for Anne to finish up the locket, do you think we can do? To that flower, we can go to that flower festival everyone's talking about. It sounds so lovely. Mm -hmm. Kate, flower festival? Well, isn't this neat? Michael, it's a local celebration where the town folk dance and get drunk in town, then wander into the woods to watch the anemones bloom. How curious. Kate, fascinating. About that. Perhaps we can find a way to celebrate that isn't quite so public? It would be very difficult for us not to attract attention at the festival. Oh. Oh, that is a fair point. Look. Caden, don't let that get you down, Mime. Perhaps we can find some other way to celebrate. Well... Mime. I mean, there's a meadow in the forest, not too far away, where the people don't go. Will you go with me, Caden, to make flower crowns? Huh? Caden, flower crowns? I'm not a... Mm, sure. <laughs> All right, we'll make some for everyone. Oh, this will be good. Michael, I'm not sure you know what you've gotten yourself into, Caden, my friend. Caden, <sighs> mercy. Look. Victoria, right. If you're done... Victoria glares, but the stair holds little heat. In fact, one could even say she looks amused. This is the plan. Let's not forget the mission ahead. Anne, you will continue developing the spirit locket. The rest of you, try for 
Alatheris' sake to keep a low profile for a day? Okay. Mine. Yes, ma'am. Come on, Caden. I want to go right away. Why would you? Eh, uh, okay. Sure. Those idiots. <laughs> Victoria. We are doomed. Everyone agrees and then leaves to go about their own business. But before you can go, Michael taps you on the shoulder. How curious. You might have a good idea for how to give Mime the festival experience without Victoria blowing a blood vessel. I'll fill you in later, okay? He winks and walks off. Okay, this can't possibly be okay. What was that about? When all of this is done, Michael... Where do you plan to go? Well, they talk. It's I not get to... like you, Anne, to ask questions you already know the answers to. I'll be back on the road, obviously. Living the good life while hiding from the hunters. You know, once I become a professor, I'll have a say in student enrollment. We could... Let me stop you right there, Anne. You know as well as I that I'm not really cut out for schoolwork. <laughs> but... Aw, are you perhaps worried about me? You absolute dimwit, Michael. Could you be serious for just one bloody second of your life? <sighs> With everything that's happened, you and I both know things won't be the same. Victoria can only pull so many strings with the knights. You are going to be on the run from them for the rest of your life, wandering aimlessly with no goal or purpose. So that's what this is about? Thank you, Anne, for your kindness. You and I, our goals couldn't be any more different, but I promise you, I will never wander without purpose. <laughs> Just as your academy is your home, the road is mine. I will be happy. I promise you. <laughs> you better. Otherwise, I'll track you down and force you to enroll in one of my classes, and I won't go easy on the homework. <laughs> Noted. Well then. Okay, so we have Michael in the library, Anne at the flower shop, Victoria at home, and Caden in the woods. We're gonna go and see if we can um, frolic in the meadow with Caden. Hmm. You go in search of Mime and Caden in the meadow, a little way out of town. It has been left fallow to rest the soil for another season, and the ground is engulfed in wildflowers. And then you wrap the ends around like this to lock the knot in place. Careful! You don't want to accidentally snap the stem. You find the pair seated within the tall grass, the former busily teaching the latter how to properly braid a flower crown. And that's easy for you to say. These things are very delicate. Nah, it's just your hands that are too big. Hi, you here to help as well? Mime's a tough teacher. It looks like you've got your work cut out for you, Caden. He's doing all right for a beginner, as long as he only uses the sturdy flowers. <laughs> I'm still struggling a little with the purpose of this exercise. I understand that you make these wreaths for aesthetic reasons, but won't the flowers just wilt? Well, sure, but until they do, they look really cute. Something pretty until it wilts, huh? What an odd form of art. Your people aren't fans of pretty things? On the contrary. Artists are highly valued among my people. However, the materials used are always permanent. Statues or glass figurines, jewelry cut from precious stones or metals. It's all designed to last forever, something to leave behind that 
others might remember you by. Spending time making something like this brittle thing, knowing full well it's temporary. Hmm. I quite like it. <laughs> really? I'm glad, because we still got a few more to go for making enough for everyone. I... see. Why don't I give you a hand? That would be most appreciated. You sit down among the wildflowers, and together the three of you get to work weaving wreaths. Many attempts and mistakes later, you are starting to have a nice collection of finished crowns. Mime has run off to fetch more flowers, leaving you and Caden alone in the little nest of grass you've built. You sit for a while in silence. Caden looks like he's deep in thought, and finally puts down the wreath with a frustrated sigh. Now that we are alone, I needed to talk to you about something, actually. You lean in and place the flower crown on top of Caden's white hair, making him freeze in surprise. What? You looked way too serious. Lighten up, Caden. But I can't. When... When every time I close my eyes, I see you fall again. When we were fighting Ronan, you put yourself so easily in harm's way. I saw the light leave your eyes for a moment, and it scared me to my core. It drives me insane, thinking that in that moment, you could have been gone, and I couldn't do anything. I couldn't even tell you how Aww. much I care about you. Aww. He's sweet. Oh, ooh, ooh. Ah, uh, do we, do we? I think we go for timid. You look down shyly, fidgeting with your hands. I, I care about you too, Caden. She. You. You nod, too embarrassed to look up and see his reaction. Then, a warm hand lifts your chin and your eyes meet his burning red, burning red embers staring back. Except that his eyes look green, but okay. Can I? His eyes flicker to your lips. Oh, perhaps we should have just kissed him. I don't know. He seems like a timid type, though. We can blush, we can be flirtatious, or we can be teasing. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I think he's like the type where you need to sort of take the reins. Or that could be just uh, me being me. Some people are just never subby. All right, let's kiss him. You lean in to kiss him. Aww. Why don't I remember how to take a screen grab? I want a screen grab. Nope. Well, let's save. That's for sure. I'm just gonna take a screenshot here, like with my screenshot nonsense. Because this is too good to pass up. Okay. He pulls you close, and your hands tangle in his shirt. His touch is so gentle, like he's afraid you might shatter like a dream in his arms. When you pull apart, his eyes are staring down at you with awe and adoration. You see and are not red. Hi, you two. I found a bunch more flowers for us. The two of you freeze at the sound of mime, skipping closer, and you quickly pull apart, straightening yourselves as the spirit flops down in the grass beside you. She tilts her head, immediately sensing something's off. Is everything okay? 
<laughs> Everything's just perfect, mine. Don't you worry. You feel Caden's hand give yours a squeeze, and you share a smile. Mime shrugs, accepting that answer, and the three of you continue your work on the flower crowns, with you and Caden sitting just a bit closer together. Yay! You once called me soft, Anne. <laughs> and I still stand by that statement. <laughs> I figured. But I've realized lately, you're quite soft yourself, are you not? You might seem cold and focused on your work, but you care for your friends fiercely. If that's what it means to be soft, then I don't think I mind. <laughs> oh, that? It wasn't meant as an insult, you know. I much prefer that people show their true selves instead of hiding behind a fake tough persona. But you said you compared me to Victoria then said I was nothing like her. Well, Victoria is an outlier, obviously. She's just genuinely tough. There's no reason for her to fake it. <laughs> I suppose you're right about that. Hmm. Okay. I guess let's go check out Michael. You find Michael in the Forgotten Library. Welcome. How are you feeling? That was quite the impressive magic you performed yesterday. I must admit, I'm still struggling to understand exactly what happened. Hmm. I don't think my magic wants to be understood. It would much rather remain an enigma to us all. I can empathize with that. You did a good thing for that kid yesterday. Even if I'll never agree with the decision to send him off to the academy. Hmm. It was the best outcome given the situation. Mm, I know. Even if I detest logic, sometimes we have to follow it. The Academy will probably be the safest place for him from now on. He doesn't strike me as the type would survive on the road alone for very long. Even I had help in the beginning. I know you said when we met your story wasn't a cheery fairy tale, but even so... Would you be willing to share it with me? For you, I'll make an exception. <laughs> I don't remember much from the cleansing. I must have been five or younger when it happened. I remember the screaming and the flames. And then from the ashes, someone hauled me up into the sun. A new life. The Empire would never admit it. But there are many mages living under their noses across the land. Powerful mages. Who stay out of the way of non-magi humans. Some of these fancy themselves collectors of sorts. Scouring the earth for talented individuals to recruit. That's... What happened to me. I was brought into a guild of spellcasters. Who raised and educated me trained me to become a force of nature <laughs> would you believe me if i told you once upon a time i had ambitions to change the world you don't still your self-deprecating humor is failing you michael it's not that hard to imagine really Well, you know, I thought if I just became powerful enough, if I studied and trained harder than any mage before me, then I could be the one to change things. <laughs> I, I learned soon enough how a 
ridiculous that idea was. I am really hopeful that changing things is one of the possibilities in this game. I left the guild. They didn't share my grand vision of reform, and arrogant as I was, I didn't think I needed them. So I left, and I learned. And the more I knew, the more I was lost. The more you know about the world, the more insignificant your own existence becomes. As you realize, the world is a rolling boulder, and we are ants in its path. Yet I came here, fueled by my own morbid sense of curiosity. One last grand attempt of the genius who wanted to change the world. I didn't expect to succeed, to survive, and then I met you. You are possibly the most perplexing <laughs> individual I have ever met. You took an already absurd world and turned it on its head. But even so, I'm grateful for our time together. I guess you're tolerable. I'm grateful for your friendship as well, Michael. Thank you for sticking this out with me. Anytime, my friend. Though, I'd prefer to take a short break in between our next world-saving <laughs> adventure. Maybe next time, we can deal with something less life-threatening, like bandits, pirates, maybe the dragon. We can make a difference if we apply ourselves. A difference, huh? I guess that wouldn't be too bad either. <laughs> Here you go, Caden. A list? I don't understand. What is this, mine? I wrote down all the places you should go visit in town once the demons are gone. <laughs> the bakery is an obvious one. Also, the town square at Twilight looks really pretty. And there's this bridge over the brook. If you climb down underneath, you can watch these tiny fish swim upstream and... But, Mime, I thought you were going to show all these places to me. <laughs> I would love to, but you've seemed a bit uncomfortable around me lately, so I figured you'd rather go alone. Mime, oh, I'm sorry. I thought I told you to stop apologizing already. I know, and I'm... S I'm going to try harder at forgiving myself. So, save your list, okay? I want you to be the one showing me around. Oh, okay. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> me too. Aw. That's pretty cute. Alright, let's go... Ooh, let's talk to Quinn first. The flower shop is closed, so you step around the back to go inside, finding Quinn and Kim hunched over a potted plant. The young mage's face is scrunched up in concentration as Quinn guides him through some steps. Don't force the magic, Kim. Flowers are gentle. They need encouragement, not pressure. So I should cheer for the flower? <laughs> if that helps you focus on the encouraging energy, then yes. Absolutely. Hello, Captain Kiarda. How are you? What is new and exciting in your world? As I look for the right button. We are you 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 missed uh Caden and Mime making flower crowns and us coming over and like Mime running off to go pick up flowers and then we totally kissed Caden, or maybe Caden kissed us. It was complicated. Ooh, happy birthday to your son. That is awesome. Did, um, did 
did they get good gifts and or have a party or in general a happy birthday? Ten's a nice round number. That is very exciting. Also, someday that child is going to be a teenager and all of their friends are going to go, huh, your birthday's on 420. Nice. Because you know they will. Teenagers. <laughs> but yeah, I am just very excited that we got to kiss Caden, so that was pretty cool. Because yay, real romance. Because I tried that whole Victoria angle, and that was just going nowhere, so. Ooh. <laughs> hey. I used to have a job where uh, they just told you that your birthday is an automatic day off in addition to all your other days off, and that was the best thing ever, so. Not going to school and Cracker Barrel sounds great. And Party Sunday. That's pretty exciting. But, um, yeah. Well, I'm gonna keep, keep reading just a little bit. Um, because I want to see what happens with, uh, with Kim and Quinn as she tries to teach him to encourage the plants. <laughs> okay, then. Come on, flower. You've got this. A small blue flower opens its petals and Kim's eyes widen in amazement. Ooh, was that like... Because your birthday was in the summer, or because your parents were into the whole no uh, no school on birthday thing? Because I always had to go to school on my birthday unless it was on the weekend. <sighs> I did it. <laughs> Cheering on others can sometimes help you cheer on yourself. <laughs> Don't forget that if you ever doubt yourself. And speak the words out loud. Say you think you can do it. Because even if you don't believe it at first, if you keep cheering yourself on, eventually it will stick. Oh, do they have school in June here? Like, I should know this. But it's state dependent, I think. This was so much easier in in Russia, where school always started on September 1st, and it always ended on May 25th. Like, no matter what, there was no school in summer, and summer was June, July, and August. But like here, sometimes school starts in the middle of August, sometimes school starts in September, you never know. It's like it's dependent on whether the school district has an air conditioning. Close to your birthday, but never on your birthday. That is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Oh, yeah, no, that's true. I bet Pengu would only, like, really get no school on birthday when there were snow days. <laughs> Being, like, the opposite of a summer birthday. <sighs> I am in the middle of March, so it's like, eh... Neither here nor there. There's never any vacation during that week. Basically, ever. Because I don't think... Yeah, like... Easter break in the US happens usually... Even happens in March. It's later in March, so... But yeah. I'll try to remember that. Glad. Now, go on. Put this guy back out in the shop. Right. <laughs> Quinn turns to you. Ah, hello. You have good timing. Uh, something happened? Indeed. Kim and I have been hard at work all day. Given how he's been repressing his magic until now, it's quite amazing how fast he's learning. No doubt he will turn into quite the powerful mage one day. With his help, I finally finished my spell to restore the forest. Yay. It will take a while for nature to properly return. 
but it is a step in the right direction. <sighs> that is such a relief. I'm sure Mime will be happy to hear it. She and the rest of Anamone Valley, I'm sure. There's something about scars like that. They keep people from moving on. They're like weird little bubbles floating off of the scene, and I don't know what they are. Hopefully, this will be a way for the people here to start healing. I couldn't have done it without your help, though. Thanks to you, I can finally use my training for something with a great purpose. I'm looking forward to celebrating with all of you tonight. You know, Victoria, with my invisibility spell, I could really help you out with gathering information. If you want to know what some sketchy people are discussing, I could just sneak in and... No, my... <laughs> but... I'm not trusting you with something as dangerous as that. Knowing you, you'd trip over yourself on the way and reveal yourself. She's not wrong. That... It would be dangerous if you got caught on your own like that. You better stick close so I can keep you safe. Got it? Victoria! Now? Let's get back to it. Okay? Right. <laughs> Alright. Let's talk to Anne. If you're here for Anne, she went out a moment oh. ago. You can probably find her out behind oh. the shop. Oh, I see. Thank you, Quinn. No problem, darling. <laughs> you walk around the back of the flower shop to find not only the mage, but a furry guest, too. Here you go, Mercury. Leftover chicken from dinner. Enjoy. <laughs> a gray cat purrs and winds around Anne's feet as the mage places down a plate of food. It eagerly chomps down the treat as she watches it with a gentle smile. <laughs> You're welcome as always. Hi, Anne. Who is your friend? Anne jumps up, startled, making the kitten meow in protest. Uh, you? Uh, why are you here? I haven't called for you yet. Or have I? my day today mostly work so far but i am streaming until nine and then i have my date because wednesday is date night very excited about this my partner was up um last week like thursday to thursday um so i took a week from streaming and got to hang out with them but now they're back in chicago so we're back to zoom dates which is kind of sad, but it is true. It was our two-year anniversary, so it was good to be actually together for that. But um, other than that, my day's been pretty boring. <sighs> um... uh, are you okay, Anne? You look a little jumpy. Oh, obviously. I didn't expect you to sneak up on me in the middle of my break. Yeah, it is. It sucks. We have to do planes. Ooh, thank you for following, Smiley. Yay. And thank you for lurking. And apparently my alerts are Tom Nook. No matter which no matter which scene I'm in. Okay. Yeah, it's like we've always been long distance. So, it's not new, but it is really kind of annoying, and I don't like it, and Zoom dates are not the same as normal dates, but we're gonna hang out and watch stuff together on the internet, and um, he's coming up for uh, a werewolf event at the end of May. Um, 
so we got one of the things we're gonna do tonight is like plan out plane tickets and all of that nonsense that's gonna be next time I'm gonna see them so that's a thing oh no I wish I, it's not even that I wish I had control of the ads. I wish I knew how the ads worked enough to like be able to time them. Like I'm fine with ads every N amount of time, but if it like popped up something that would tell me, hey, I'm about to have an ad, stop talking or stop playing a game. Like that would be nice, but. unfortunately like ah okay good i was just like saying like i wish i had some sort of like a countdown right like hey we're gonna run an ad stop doing something important but i don't know enough about how ads work to be able to really do that anyway sorry it cut me off in the middle um welcome back i was just saying that um our date tonight is going to be primarily figuring out plane tickets for when they come visit for the werewolf event in the end of May. So, you know, we lead exciting lives, but I do get to see him again at the end of May, so that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah. All right, let's see what's going on with, with Anne and the kitten. I was just taking a moment to feed Mercury. We're not allowed to have pets at the Academy. Aww. Don't you get like a mage's familiar or something? So once I go back, I'll have to leave him behind. Oh no. He'll be fine, of course. Judging by his size, I'd say I'm far from the only one feeding him. <laughs> but I am going to miss our break times. I don't think Pengu's going to a werewolf event. So I think there's probably also another LARP happening over um the holiday weekend ours is in like middle of connecticut but um i'm not actually not sure what hang on i now want to know what event pengu is going to at the end of may sometimes i see some of Pengu's calendar. <laughs> but I don't I don't see this one, so I don't know. Ah, um looks like Pengu's got something called the Wicked Wind the previous the previous weekend from the one that I am having my stuff in. Yep. Yeah, Wicked Wind. Um, it sounds interesting. Uh, I think I think she said something about it a little bit, but it is not the one I'm going to. I'm going to an event called Beltane, which is at the end of May, so it's not actually on Beltane, uh, but it's part of the One World by Night werewolf stuff that I do for funsies. Um, we didn't have it last year or the year before, so... Uh, it's very exciting to have it back and we'll see if it'll you know they're requiring vaccinations and masks and all that stuff um, so it should be reasonably safe but I am also flying internationally like the Thursday after that event so I feel like I'm potentially making bad life choices here but yeah that's true it would have but uh but alas no I am, I'm like, both paranoid and not, I, I don't even know, like, my ability to judge risk regarding COVID is completely off kilter, right? Like, if you ask me, you know, how risky is it to cross the street here without a light, like, I'd be able to assess it, or how risky is it to drive 90 on a highway, I'd be able to assess that, but... 
how risky is it to do this that or the other thing with covid is like who knows maybe it's gonna be instant death maybe it's going to be literally nothing and i have just no ability to gauge anymore and it's driving me insane it's like who knows who who knows not not me clearly clearly not me but yeah it would be nice to see you maybe next time you're up we can like all meet up less on the internet yeah that's like true but i have so much asthma and i'm so worried about it and i have like so like i have an immune system right they it, it's been let me see how long it's been about goodness almost 10 years since i had chemo right so like most of my immune system's back but like i'm still worried you know plus the thing that like the, th the two things that that i keep thinking about is one we made such a huge deal about polio and eradicating polio but for most people polio was like a cold with some bad digestive issues but the thing that we were trying to prevent and the reason that we spent all that effort with the vaccine is because of what you know to make a corollary is long polio right it's the rare complication that wasn't super rare but like was still rare and had like the lifetime effects and we have that with covid so it's a gamble on whether or not you're gonna get the the long covid or not and we don't really know like all the systems it's affecting plus covid like apparently everything else on the planet is linked to the epstein-barr virus which i've basically learned to detest because it gives you mono which like fine mono sucked but apparently if you have symptomatic mono as a teenager like as a teen or young adult you not only do you suddenly have ginormous chances of all b cell diseases so hodgkin's and non-hodgkin's lymphoma which is what i had but also it raises your um, likelihood of getting ms by a degree that is like like it makes it more likely that you'll get ms than smoking making it more likely that you get lung cancer which is why Moderna is working on an Epstein-Barr uh, mRNA vaccine. Because that thing is linked to everything to do with our neurosystems, our immune system, and our B cells. And our B cells is... Uh, our B cells are what, what does a lot of our immune system. So I didn't know... I, I learned it pretty recently. I um, If you like this sort of stuff... Uh, and it doesn't like terrify you because that's also a valid reaction there's a podcast i listen to called this podcast will kill you <laughs> and i love it it is amazing it is two epidemiologists both of them named aaron and uh they talk about everything like ms or migraines or the fact that they use the virus to attempt to get rid of uh, the rabbit problem in Australia. Um, you know, Hep B, Hep C, AIDS, COVID, like they're on season, I think, four of their podcast. And they just talk about all sorts of things. And they their podcast is kind of like structured in a here's the biology of the disease, how it presents, how it spreads, like how it all works. Here's the history of the disease, like how long has it been around? What did ancient people say about it? When did we start, you know, thinking it's not like bad magic from not enough bloodletting? 
uh, did we do we have a vaccine do we have a cure how do we like how it works and then they kind of finish with the where are we now sort of thing so it can get a little depressing because people are terrible but uh it's really cool and it's very informative and um it's a lot of fun the link to ms for epstein bar is pretty new like in the past decade is when they they just discovered this the correlation here they were also talking about this interesting thing that since 1950s um it used to be prior to 1950s or so it was that uh, ms presented about even split between uh people assigned male at birth and people assigned female at birth and starting in around 1950, it started to change at, to the point where now it's three to one. Assigned, oops, assigned female at birth, three. Assigned male at birth, one. And it's not clear whether the prevalence is rising in female assigned folks or uh, we're just diagnosing it better because you know it started being diagnosed with mris in i want to say the 70s uh, prior to that it was all about listening to symptoms so we don't know how many people with ms were told they're having hysterics or whatever it was like a wandering uterus some other stupid thing that they told women and like and they were just undiagnosed and it's always been a three to one correlation or something in the world is making it be more likely to be happening with folks assigned female at birth and we don't know and because what they're doing is not just they're epidemiologists and they know stuff but they're looking at papers published including most recent ones uh the podcast has like a lot of interesting stuff anyway that was a tangent sorry about that <sighs> Let's find out more about Anne and her cat. <laughs> Who apparently everybody is feeding. Um, I'm glad to see you've discovered some bright sides of living here. I'll admit it's not quite as big of a nightmare as I'd imagined. <laughs> you know, when I came here, I was fully prepared to hunker down and get some research done so I could return. I didn't expect to end up enjoying myself quite as much as I have. Yeah. It's been a pleasure working with you. Okay, you know what? I'm having these conversations with all the people who are all like, it's been such great fun and a great pleasure knowing you and, and working with you that I'm worried that I'm about to die. <laughs> or something. Like something terrible is going to happen, isn't it? You've been a most fascinating guinea pig. I've got to hand it to you, Anne. No one gives unique compliments quite the way you do. Compliments? I'm merely stating a fact. <laughs> Mercury makes a purring sound and rubs against Anne's hand until she relents and pets him behind the ear. You know what? Maybe I will bring him back to the academy with me. The rule against pets is silly anyway. I'm sure cats in the library would tremendously decrease the student's stress levels. I'm sure Mercury would fit right <laughs> in among the students. <laughs> right? I might have to keep them from feeding him too many treats, though. Um, so Gwen sent me to tell you that they have tea ready inside and... Is that a kitten? You and Anne share an amused look as Kim rushes out to coo and pet the cat. Seem like the tea will have to wait a bit. Hey, Anne. Are you doing all right? You're looking a bit tired. Should we get you another coffee? I... don't understand, do you mind? Huh? You're a spirit and I'm a mage. I've treated you like an expendable research project, and yet, you still keep being nice to me. Why? Um, 
Well, I suppose I just prefer being nice to people. Maybe it's a spirit thing. No, oh, Lime. I think this is all just you. I suppose... I was rather stupid to assume all spirits would be like the ones I studied at the academy. And, uh, sure, let's take a break later and have some coffee together. Really? Okay, that sounds lovely. Hmm. Everything is going too well and is going to probably go terrible soon, isn't it? Are you ready to meet up with everyone for the flower festival? Make sure you visited everyone you wanted to before proceeding. Okay. No, because we need to, like, visit oh, Victoria and Elizabeth. Ooh, this is repaired. You find Victoria in the alchemy shop, sharpening her sword while looking deep in thought. I see you're making the rounds. It must be exhausting. Always being the mediator, but somehow you've made it work. You've done well. It was a team effort. We all played our part in making this possible. <laughs> of course that would be your answer. I can see the question in your eyes, so before you ask, I'll cut straight to the point. I'm doing fine. Well, that's maybe a bit much. Mm. I'm still not comfortable that we didn't follow the proper protocol, but the result speaks for itself. Once Anne finishes the locket and we seal the demons away for good, I will brief Alethia about the situation and things will be resolved properly. About that, will you be okay? She can't exactly complain. She was the one who wanted to keep it under wraps and I was simply following orders. When I get back to Eridus, the real work will begin for me. Goldner needs to pay for the damage he's caused. Yeah. I have the evidence I need, and I will be sure to pursue anyone else involved in this scandal. This won't happen again. This is... Just be careful. He seems like the type to carry a grudge. You can try. Victoria continues sharpening a sword. The rough but precise movements making sparks dance along the edge. So... Something's obviously wrong. Out with it. Don't order me around. We need to talk about what happened last night. You jumped into that fight without any preparation, casting a spell that you had no idea how it worked, completely disregarding your own safety. Sorry I worried you, Victoria. I'm not worried, I'm furious. Mm -hmm. I can't believe you would be that reckless. You are my friend. An <laughs> annoying, careless, and stupid friend, but a friend nonetheless. I don't want to see you hurt. So in the future, just be more careful, will you? No, like... I'll give it a try. For you. <laughs> Thank you. But you know we won't. We will jump into every problem. Alright. Now we also need to go visit Elizabeth. Welcome back. You're here just in time. The new alchemy table just arrived. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> Looks like the shop will be back to its old self soon. That's great. I'm sure you're eager to get back to brewing yourself again. I appreciate it. I do miss standing by the table myself. However, during this time, these old feet have also come to appreciate sitting on the sidelines. I wonder. The whole ordeal, it has made me consider that it might be time for me to retire. You've grown so much during this time. There's nothing left for me to teach you. 
It was always my wish that you would take over the shop once you were ready. I think that it might be time. Hmm. I would be honored to, Elizabeth, if you think I'm ready. <laughs> I'm glad you think that way. It warms this old woman's heart to know that you will use what I taught you well. Let's try that again. But forgive this old woman's musings. It isn't something you need to worry about now. We still have to bring this matter of the demons to a close, and after that we need to unbind you and mine somehow. Anything else, including the future of this shop, comes second to that. Well, let's do a little bit of practice. Um, and I do want to pull up my list of how to use the alchemy table. Let's look at things. So for example, can we do the headache remedy either in two ingredients or using a volatile? Hmm. I can do it in two. Okay, so begin by adding lavender to the left and right wings. So there's lavender here and lavender here. Mix the left clock. Well, I have to say mix. Mix the left clockwise Oh, uh, whoops Nope Cancel Let's try that again Okay Mix the middle counterclockwise Then mix the left clockwise well done! Excellent. Now can I do it with a volatile ingredient? Two roses and a daisy. Rose to the top and a rose to the left and then a daisy to the right. Right clockwise. Oh, that's splendid. Yay. Go me. What else can I do? There's a strong headache remedy. I still need to do two ingredients. Oh, okay, so it's the same thing. Let's Let's do this. So, um, mix the middle clock. Well, mix the middle clockwise. Mix the right counterclockwise. Bottle. I'm proud of you, dear. Aw, he's proud of me. Okay. Daisy to the left and a rose to the right. Right, clockwise, left counter, middle clockwise, right clockwise, and bottom. I do, I do enjoy getting all the stars. A uh, strong mosquito. Lavender to the top, lavender to the right. Counter. Careful ah, when you add that. That did not work. Oh. It helps if I can tell my left from my right. I am bad at that, apparently. 
Well done. Hmm. Okay. What else can we do? Ooh. Let's see if we can do, like, literally anything with the sleeping drought here. Daisy and Daisy. Mix. Okay. Mix the middle counter and the left block. You did it! Okay. That was good. Um, rose to the left. Daisies to the rest of them. Woo! Go me. I'm just trying to fill in the stars. Eternal sleep. Hmm. Two ingredients or less. Daisy to the top and daisy to the right. Middle clockwise. Top counter clockwise. Bottom. Well done. Okay. Um Volatile ingredient. Apparently, you can do it with the one ingredient. Add a daisy to the top. And the middle count. Mix counterclockwise. Top clockwise. Middle counterclockwise again. Top clockwise again. You did oh, it! Yeah. I guess, is it like putting something in the top? Like, what makes something, um... Okay. Healing potion. So we want to do the one turn and the volatile. Okay. Lavender to the left. Lavender to the top. Daisy to the right. Mix the top clockwise. How did it go? Okay. Um. Lavender to the left. Daisy to the top. Daisy to the right. The right clockwise, the top clockwise. Okay. Well, I have a couple of things. Oh, there's still like weird new things. So that was bottomless bottle. Hmm. Let's see if I can figure out how to make this. Sunflower to the left and top ring. And the blue lily to the right. Okay. This is like 12 steps. Let's see if we can do this. Top counterclockwise. Left counterclockwise, middle clockwise, four, left counterclockwise, five, top counterclockwise.
counterclockwise, six, middle clockwise, seven, right counterclockwise, eight, middle counterclockwise, nine, left clockwise, ten, middle clockwise, and the left clockwise and bottom. Whoa, look at that! Feast for fairies. Hmm. Let's say we're gonna be done for a while. Bye. I'll see you around. Very listeners. well. Take care. Okay. <laughs> that was only slightly a little bit anticlimactic. All right, it's 8.23. Good, I can... I guess... Let's, um... Do this thing where we, uh... You know, just save things. And I guess let's let's go move on to the flower festival. That seems odd. Midnight picnic. You're all gathered at the shop, and Michael is explaining his great master plan. <laughs> yes, the streets are going to be empty while everyone is in the forest for the festival. We bring food and good company. That's enough for a good time, no? So that's how it is. Victoria, I'm surprised. I was sure you were going to suggest we go to the tavern. Oh, really? Michael, you wound me. We have miners among us. I can be considerate. I would suggest fine wine be part of the food we enjoy, though. <sighs> Victoria, figures. <laughs> Where would we go, though? The forest will be packed with people. <laughs> well, the wilted forest, of course. The entire room stares at him in silence. Why? Why in the world would we have a picnic out there? Are you sure? That place will be super creepy at night. Mm. Michael, we have faced down demons and bigoted mine owners together. Are you really going to be intimidated by a mere forest? You know, this this can't possibly Maybe, end well. But... Look. Hear me out, because the forest has a questionable reputation among the town folk. No one is going to go within miles of them. We'll have the whole area to ourselves. I see. Victoria, that's actually rather clever of you. Thank you. <laughs> also, with all the trees gone, it has to be the perfect spot for stargazing. Um... Let's just be careful, okay? We have to stay inconspicuous. <laughs> Fear not. I am nothing if not a master of subterfuge. <sighs> Much sighing happening. Everybody knows Michael is a terrible at subterfuge. The wilted forest looks just as bare as you remember, but you notice how shoots are now growing among the black roots. The forest is healing, which is reassuring. Ah, oh, these flower crowns are really beautiful, Mime. Thank you. It's all thanks to your help, though. I hadn't expected them to wilt so quickly. Oh, it was nothing a little spell couldn't handle. <laughs> but that is why the crowns are usually worn during the day. Wait, so I've done it all wrong? Oh, don't worry your head. Sometimes... We must adjust our old traditions to fit the times. Indeed. The flowers spread joy. That's all that matters. <sighs> I'm glad you think so. Let's find a place to sit, Kim. They're so cute together, Kim and Mime. Okay. Ah, no running, you two. There might be loose roots and you could fall. You can relax, Quinn. The children will be fine. They are sturdier than they appear. <laughs> you say that, but... <sighs> Why am I here again? 
You should be working on the locket. It wouldn't be right to have a celebration without you here, Anne. It would bring down morale. You could have at least let me bring my notebooks. This place... It's still so barren. I wonder if it will ever return to what it was. What's done is done. The forest will grow back eventually. You should move forward too. I suppose... You're right. I'm impressed, Victoria. That almost sounded empathetic. What was that, mage? <laughs> anyway, who's up for a game of cards? Who do you want to see? Don't worry, you'll have time to talk with everyone. Uh, well, I, I want to see Katie. You have left yourself open again. Victoria, dear, for a trained professional, you are very easy to read. <sighs> Just be quiet and play your hand, Michael. <laughs> he is right, though. It's refreshing for me not to be the one losing this game. It's my first time playing. What did you expect? It's my first time playing this game as well. But you already won twice? Always watch out for the quiet ones. Are you going to join us? Oh, please be kind to me. I won't promise anything. <laughs> you share a game of cards in an unprecedented moment of calm. You wander off to find Mime and Kim setting out blankets on the ground by a dead tree. My memories are still a bit fuzzy, but I think I like this tree. Quinn told me that once I get better at using my powers, I'll be able to speak with the trees like spirits do. Maybe I'll make friends, just like you did. I think you will definitely make tons of friends. <laughs> Don't you agree? I'm sure you'll fit right in at the academy. I sure hope so. I'll study hard. And then, once I graduate, I'll get my own flower shop somewhere. Just like Quinn's. And then Ronan can... When we save him, he won't have to work any dangerous jobs anymore. It will be my turn to take care of him. Aww. I think that would be nice. I'm sure you can make that happen. And when you do... I'll definitely come to visit you both. Mine. You. I'll be looking forward to that. Aw. You've taken on the role of teacher quite well, Quinn. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't expect to enjoy it quite this much. Kim is a lovely student. But tutoring him has made me think that perhaps I should look into the possibility of doing this for others. Are you thinking of getting a professor title like Anne? Oh, nothing of the sort. Mages are not the only ones who enjoy learning. I was thinking of teaching the villagers about the plants I grow. Maybe we share a few non-magic skills that will help them grow their own? Even if they can't use magic like me, knowing more might ease some minds. Perhaps even prevent some of the misunderstandings we've seen lately. That's, that That's would not be. a small challenge. Teaching a child is one thing. Influencing the minds of people who already have their set. Well, that's difficult. But there's hardly any harm in trying, right? And I am nothing if not patient. <laughs> what do you think about Queen's idea? I think you'd make a lovely teacher, Quinn. Thank you. I'll do my very best. As long as it doesn't affect the flower shop, then I approve as well. <laughs> You've only been here a short while, but I've grown accustomed to getting my herbs from you. <laughs> of course. I'd never disappoint my best customers. <laughs> Ooh, 
the sun starts to set and you all gather to watch the splendid display as the light dims and gives way to thousands of stars. And then the ground comes to life. The thin green shoots that have overtaken the barren forest floor bloom, their brilliant white anemone flowers bursting open. <laughs> what an Elethrus name is this? <gasps> the anemones are blooming. That's wonderful. Our spell worked. I'm glad. This is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. It is, isn't it? Nature always finds its way back. It just needed a little help to get started. <laughs> look, look, Quinn, they're glowing. Kim is smiling so brightly it almost hurts. Curious. The anemone flowers growing in this area have always drawn upon the energy of the crystals in the soil, giving them this very distinctive feature. <laughs> No doubt the town gets its name from this very phenomenon. Okay, if the flowers are also drawing on the crystals, they're probably tied into the seal, and this is probably terrible. Such a beautiful spectacle of nature. You all watch the flowers together. You sit back, watching everyone having a good time, when you feel a familiar tall presence sidle up to you. The writings and illustrations I studied back home really do not do justice to the sight of the night sky. I remember stopping dead in my tracks when I first stepped out into the world, mesmerized by their beauty. You're breathtaking. Somehow they seem even more entrancing tonight, now that I have you by my side. Hmm. I wonder... Are all Outlanders this sweet with their words, or am I just lucky to have caught a particularly romantic one? <laughs> I wouldn't say I... There are definitely others who do poetic flattery better. You make it easy, though. How curious. It's odd. I was concerned how you would react to all of this. I fear I'm going to stumble into some cultural barrier and ruin whatever this is. Hmm. You know me better than that, Caden. You won't scare me off that easily. In fact, I think I'm the one who should be worried about accidentally chasing you off. This is... That will never happen. You know, they all say that. They're mostly all wrong. His hand slides into yours and you watch the stars together. Aww. As the sun rises the next day over an Emony Valley, most of the townsfolk spend the early hours locked up tight in their homes, lest the light disturbs their brewing hangovers. You, on the other hand, have made your way down to the forgotten library, summoned by Anne, who is eager to show you her final rendition of the spirit locket. We'll save again, because I am a paranoid fuck. And because nothing bad has happened yet, which means, like, it's going to any second now. This might be my greatest achievement yet. A masterful piece of tinker magic ingenuity. This final version of the locket will fix the tear in the seal for good, and it will be all thanks to my undeniable genius. Or she's just gonna fuck up, and we're gonna release all the demons ever. Your enthusiasm is encouraging, Anne. And also quite terrifying mm -hmm. i'll ignore the gloating as long as the device actually works of course it will work as soon as i'm done connecting it to the locket i thought you had completed your work hey you were the one telling me i should take the night off yesterday so you'll need to wait patiently for the finale Just get it done however you have to. We've stalled long enough. You hand the locket over to Anne, who nods. I agree. It'll just be a moment. She gets to work welding the metal together, and your group is left to them for the moment to watch her work. Elizabeth walks up beside you, her eyes running over the rows of books with a faraway look. 
feeling nostalgic, Elizabeth? Perhaps a little. Despite how it ended, I have many fond memories of this place. There was so much excitement and drive to make a positive change in the world. It's a shame the result never lived up to the original version. There, all done. And declares triumphantly and hands you back your locket. It's time. Now, remember, this spell will use up all of the demon energy you've collected so far. There will be no test runs. You will have to ace this on the first try. Yikes. Well, let's be determined. Let's end this. You prepare yourself and hold up the locket, but before you can cast the spell, here it comes. The door to the library suddenly bursts open. What the? A well, well, asshole. well. I thought I heard something scurrying around down here, but I didn't expect to find quite such a large gathering of rats. You all turn to find Goldner walking out from between the bookcases. Michael tenses beside you. How did you get down here? I followed you, of course. It came to my attention that you lot were planning something nefarious. But even I couldn't have imagined that you were hiding an archivist's collection underneath our noble town. How disgraceful. You know full well why we're here. We're simply cleaning up the mess left by your greed. You're interfering with official empire business, Mr. Goldner. I would suggest you back up immediately. Right. I imagined you would make this claim again. But just to be sure, I took the liberty of calling in a few favors to get a second opinion, as it were. Ah, oh, fuck. Alethea steps out from the shadows, flanked by a large group of knights that quickly encircles you. She's looking around the library, eyes wide and fists clenched. This place. It's just as I explained, you see, Commander. An archivist's collection. Buried. Underground. And the group of traitors who tried to hide this from the Empire. Hmm. Uh, uh, Commander, I... I suggest you hold your tongue for now, Victoria. I'll deal with you later. Elizabeth. Alithia. Let me explain. So this is why you left all those years ago. I can't believe this I helped you leave your position even when we needed you I needed you on the front lines I let you go because I believed you were breaking and I wanted to keep you safe but instead you came here to help that traitor Viv was our friend she sacrificed more than any of us for the Empire, only to have them turn on her when she was no longer needed. She broke her oath as a mage and turned to forbidden magics. The way I remember it, it was the Empire that demanded we do anything in our power to win the war. Enough. I won't hear more of your excuses. I will deal with your treason soon enough. Your old friend has clearly been busy collecting his hoard of illegal documents. This type of information is dangerous in the wrong hands. It must be removed at once. I see the Empire still would rather destroy the past than take a lesson from it. How predictable. Ah. Oh. The Archivist himself, I presume? 
your punishment shall be swift as well. The Paragon of Aridus has ordered me to set this matter straight, and I intend to follow my orders. Isn't the Paragon Anne's father? We were merely following the orders you gave. Please, we still need to fix the damage caused by the mining, or the town won't be safe. Now that sounds like a threat to me. There is nothing to reconsider. I gave you and your spirit a chance to redeem yourselves, but I can't ignore this. Alethea well, holds up her hand, and there's a sound of blades being unsheathed. That's not good. They can't possibly be thinking about executing us here. That appears to be exactly what they are thinking. If I may, Commander, uh, while I agree with your swift judgment, I feel it is only right that the townsfolk are made aware of the tragedy we've avoided today. They should be allowed to see the criminals themselves before justice is served. The commander looks down at him in visible disgust. You wish to make a spectacle so you can bask in the glory? Oh, how cruel. I merely suggest these people are made an example of, for the good of all citizens. After all, if you don't have a public trial, I will have to be the one relaying my accounts to the masses. He smirks crookedly and Alethea sneers. Fine. You'll get your spectacle, snake. After we are done dealing with this place. Knights, bring the prisoners. We're moving out. Burn this place. To the ground. No! You watch in horror as the knights put torches to the age-old tomes, and within a minute, blazing fire fills the room. Michael is devastated, struggling against his captors, but there's no way out. The group is dragged outside and up into the town square. Hmm. I can't remember having ever seen the town in this state. A confused and tense crowd has gathered in the square, murmuring anxiously among themselves, as knights stationed in every corner keep watch, their faces stoic. Victoria's expression is an unreadable mask, unlike Anne and Caden, who struggle to hide their fear. Mime looks like she might be sick, and Michael? Michael hasn't looked up once ever since he saw the library burn. Alethea stands tall next to a grinning goldner who throws out his arms theatrically to gain the attention of the crowd. My fellow citizens, it is with great joy that I bring before you the group responsible for all the bad luck that has befallen our town. These magic folk, these outsiders, have been caught hiding illegal magic artifacts beneath our town. Their murmurs and cries of shock. No doubt their actions are what brought about our misfortune killed the forests, burned our shops and more. So today, I, Nicholas Goldener, caught them red-handed, and the Knights of the Empire are here to bring them to justice. I hate being right. Um... This is... That's not what happened. Please let me explain what has been going on. The demons did not come from the library. They escaped from a prison hidden away in the mines. The crowd becomes still and then... What's going on? What's going on with the mines? Huh? Demons? Why did no one tell us about this? What the? What's going on here? 
Goldner glares at you darkly. Lies and slander. Commander, silence this fiend at once. Althea gives the man a cold stare. You wanted a trial, Messer Goldner. I cannot see how you would disagree with the other side being allowed to present their case. The crowd yells and jeers. Ah! Tell us the truth. Ah! A trial. Hold a trial. <laughs> Let them ah! speak. Goldner looks extremely uncomfortable, but brushes it off with a confident smirk. <laughs> Very well. If the people want a trial, then I shall lay the evidence bare, so you may all witness the chaos these people have wrought. How you answer during the trial will affect the final verdict. Yeah, we're gonna talk about the danger. I don't... I don't know which one I should do. Should I expose his crimes or talk about the danger? I figure I should talk about the danger at hand, right? Ah, uh, Because, like, otherwise it would be more selfish. Mm. I'll tell you what happened. I speak the truth. There are demons loose in our town. Murmurs and whispers run through the crowd, mostly skeptical. They were imprisoned in crystals in the mines, but escaped. We've been working to put them back, but if we don't finish our work, we will all still be in danger. Oh, really now? Are you threatening the people of this good town, Alchemist? Oh. I've done everything in my power to keep everyone safe. Oh, this shall be good. <laughs> you haven't done anything for this town the way I have. I love these people. That's not true, though. The alchemist saved my child when no one else wanted to help. That's right. I'm completely forgotten about that. Why would a bad person go to such lengths to save a child? Thank you. Goldner looks extremely flustered. Enough of this. That means nothing. I still have more evidence against you. The crowd parts for a couple of Goldner's goons who are carrying between them a stoic Quinn and a terrified Kim. Althea glares. Why do you? What is the meaning of this, Goldner? Do not believe you have the authority to order people to be brought to you like criminals. Let's see. Let's call it a citizen's arrest. The flower shop owner has been aiding this group of villains, and we were shocked to find they were also harboring a child mage. Tell me. Is that true, mage? Actually... Kim was made aware of his powers barely a day ago. We agreed that your knight, with your knight, to allow him a bit of time to gather himself before we called for the demon hunters. Report. Victoria? I... That's the truth. I approved of this. How disappointing. <laughs> Victoria grits her teeth. <sighs> Might not agree with my decision, but you cannot argue it wasn't in my authority to make it. Let's hear it then. That is true. And I'm very curious as to what their involvement is in this. My brother was taken by one of those demons. The alchemist has been helping me try to save him. The crowd murmurs. You all know Ronan. He worked in the mines for years. He's a good man. But then he got hurt. Because the mines aren't safe. And he was angry and frustrated. Ronan turned all that anger against magic. Because that's what everyone else was fearing. But it wasn't magic that hurt him. It was that man. He points at Goldner, who splutters. Enough of this. You little... About that... I would rethink my words if I were you, Monsieur. Unless you really think attacking a child is a worthy defense. 
Goldner's jaw snaps shut and he sneers at Quinn, who is stepping in front of the child protectively. Yeah. Fine, let the child speak. Tears are gathering in the young boy's eyes, but he gives a firm nod. My brother, my true brother would never wish harm on anyone, but you would ignore the people being hurt under you. How many people are you going to destroy just to line your own pockets? I thought the mine was supposed to make our lives better, not worse. Oh, poor child. The mines never make anybody's life better. Have you not read How Green Was My Valley? <sighs> the crowd roars in agreement, and Goldner pales. You see... Your actions have caught up with you, Goldner. The town knows who you truly are. Now, listen here. This is all that mage's fault. They must have poisoned the kid's mind while teaching him. Really? That doesn't make sense. Quinn's a flower mage. They don't even have that sort of power. However, they did use their skills to help restore the dead forest. This. What? You see. It's true. I saw it this morning. The anemone flowers are growing in the soil again. Uh, I'm glad. That's amazing. How lovely. I can't take the whole credit, though. The alchemist was a great help. So... Are these really the horrible villains you make them out to be? Your case doesn't make sense, Goldner. You smile as the crowd cheers clearly won over, and Goldner looks like he might pop a blood vessel in his face. You filthy little... Seemingly having had enough of Goldner's theatrics, Alethea takes center stage, pushing the man aside. He sneers, but one glance from her steely eyes makes him grow silent, and a hush falls over the crowd. The commander unsheaths her blade and speaks solemnly. The verdict is clear. The group of adventurers are found to be innocent of the alleged crimes. The crowd cheers and you feel relief like no other wash over you. But then Alethea turns to Michael. However, the case against the wild mage still stands. Illegal practice of magic, even with good intentions, cannot go unpunished. She turns to Victoria, then hands her blade to your friend. Commander? This is your moment of redemption, Victoria. Ooh. Carry out your sentence as a knight, and I may overlook your transgression. Victoria takes the blade, looking down at Michael, who huffs, smirking through a bruised lip. Do your worst, demon hunter. She raises the blade. Victoria, please. You can't possibly believe that this is right. Oh, the alchemist is always such an idealist. Trying to bring reason to a debate without it. Michael chuckles softly, and Victoria grips, grits her teeth, hands tightening around the blade, then lowers it. I can't... do it. <sighs> what? Alethea looks furious, but Victoria rounds on her, throwing out her hands. This man has done nothing wrong. He's helped us catch numerous demons when you refuse to send us aid. I cannot, in good conscience, end his life. It isn't right. If the law doesn't permit fairness or decency, then it is the law that is wrong, not the accused. The crowd gasps, and Alethea's expression turns dark. There's sadness, but she pushes it back into a cold, hard expression. Alethea takes back her blade, but she does not sheath it. Then as a traitor to the Empire... You will share his fate. Your companions step closer, forming a circle as the knights surround you. The knights are advancing, swords drawn, and Goldner is frothing at the mouth, furious. Ah, that's it! 
Don't you dare let them get away. Justice must be served. Everyone whoops around to look at Goldner, who is clutching his throat, eyes bulging, and face turning blue. No! We had a deal! <laughs> he wheezes and the crowd screams when black ichor pours from his mouth and eyes, painting his skin black. This, this can't be good. Demons. Goldner collapses on the stage, all eyes turning to you and your companion. No! What's going on? <gasps> you see him then, in the crowd, smiling. <laughs> Roman. Black mist is swirling around him. It comes from the crowd and is sucked into his locket, feeding it. <laughs> Thank you for the show, everyone. It was very... impactful. Even if I did have to improvise a little there at the end. He disappears from the crowd and then reappears on the stage. What's the meaning of this? Merely cashing in on a deal. You see, old Goldner here wanted an edge against you lot. And in exchange, he promised me a deadly spectacle. When he didn't deliver, I took it upon myself to get what I was owed. When a subject fails to deliver on an order, they must be punished. Isn't that right? Commander. You. What did you do? Oh, this is all you. I merely stoked the flames a little. Hate. Fear. Humanity's greatest weaknesses. Yet incredibly potent in the right hands. He purrs and holds up his locket, brimming with energy. A mirage. You set this up to trap it. This locket finally has the spirit it needs. Their own hate for magic will be what releases my brethren from their prison. How fitting. A rune of magic begins to glow behind him as he moves to cast his spell. <sighs> Free. At long last. The ground shakes and shadows grow longer as the realm of reality seems to shift and bend and finally crack. The seal breaks. This can't be. <laughs> Get away from me! Demons, look out! The streets crack and people are screaming and fleeing in all directions as demons purr from the dark. We failed. Um... We need a plan. Fast. Everyone should... There's no time. I am sorry, child. But you have to go. Elizabeth steps in front of you, protecting Get out of here while you can. I'll hold him back. Um... Elizabeth, please be reasonable. There's no way you can... I know. I'm sorry. But you are still my apprentice. Trust me... on this. Oh... Such a moving scene. I'm sorry I have to cut it short. Ronan gestures with his hand and you watch as demons come flying out and surround you and your companions. <laughs> I won't let you. Commander? Get out of here, Victoria. Someone must report back to Eridus what's happened. But... Oh, Althea and Elizabeth can, like, die together like the lovers they were forever ago. Elizabeth is right. I might not always have been the best teacher for you, but you're still my student. 
take the alchemist and go. Understood. Olivia, don't think you can talk me out of this now, Elizabeth. <laughs> I know. I wouldn't dare challenge you. Elizabeth throws a vial onto the ground, and light explodes, making everyone stumble back, blinded. Come on! Mime grabs you by the hand, and you are surprised by the strength with which she pulls you through the crowd. Elizabeth, Elizabeth isn't following you, instead throwing you a wink before disappearing into the smoke. You wind through the crowd of panicked townsfolk. It only takes a moment, and you are swept away by the tide. Mime's hand in yours is the only thing keeping you steady as you make, make for the forest. Um... Okay, well, we're not going to start chapter 6 because it's 9 and I have to go. But also, yikes. Yikes on bikes. Yikes on bikes. Well, folks, that's, um, that's chapter 5. We're going to go now because I'm about to go have a date. And, um, yeah, thank you for everybody who hung out and everybody who's going to watch the VOD. And, um, thank you again to Smiley Whale for following and Captain Kiarda for hanging out and chatting. And, um, have a good Wednesday night, folks. Is anybody streaming? Yeah, I'm going to go... I'm gonna raid totes because I can, uh, and then I'm gonna run away. <laughs> Let's see. Eight seconds. Five, four, three, two, one.